Welcome to our new series where we travel through Europe, starting in London and making it through different European countries and eventually ending in the Netherlands. Along the way we will visit some truly remarkable places, showing you top attractions to visit in each location and even letting you know what delicacies you need to try, like Austria's Wiener Schnitzel or some fresh authentic Italian pizza. You might even get a good idea of where you want to travel in Europe, or maybe pack your bags when you can and set off on our European tour, letting you see what Europe has to offer. We will be uploading a new installment of the series each Thursday, or you can catch up on the playlist on the channel if you have missed an episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment on what you would like to see in the next video or if you have been to any of these amazing places before. We are starting our trip in the UK. There are a good few places of interest in the UK but we know we can't do everything, and because you can travel across the whole of the UK in only a matter of hours we will start you off in Northern Ireland then to Scotland, Wales and finally England. Starting in Belfast the capital of Northern Ireland which is best known for the birthplace of the famous RMS Titanic which struck an iceberg in 1912. Titanic Belfast, named the world's leading tourist attraction at the prestigious World Travel Awards in 2016, is located beside the Titanic Slipways, the Harland and Wolf Drawing Offices and Hamilton Graving Dock, the very place where Titanic was designed, built and launched in 1912. Titanic Belfast tells the story of the Titanic, from her conception in Belfast in the early 1900s, through her construction and launch, to its maiden voyage and subsequent place in history. The self-guided Titanic experience extends over nine interpretive and interactive galleries, which explore the sights, sounds, smells and stories of RMS Titanic, as well as the city and people who made her. Ticket admission starting from £19.99. Over the last few years Belfast, and Northern Ireland as a whole, has become famous to a whole new audience via the worldwide TV hit Game of Thrones. When filming first started in 2010-2011 the stories of Game of Thrones were unknown to many, outside of the legion of loyal fans who followed the original books, but in the years that have passed millions have become swept up in the tales of Westeros and beyond. You can catch a Game of Thrones full day tour starting at £25 per adult. While you're in Belfast, why not dine in at one of their fine restaurants starting with Apic for special occasions. Michael Dean's APIC was awarded a Michelin star only 18 months after opening. The attention to detail does not get in the way of the deep rustic flavors of the food. Among the marvels might be dishes such as lamb breast with garlic, soy and honey, and lingoustine with asparagus, endive and lardo. Tasting menus at £35 and £45. Or of course if you have set out a budget, try out Howard Street Best for casual dining, child-friendly, cheap eats, youthful and occasionally loud, this ramshackle, bare brick temple is very Belfast. Marty Murphy is in the kitchen at Howard Street, and if you visit the city and miss out on dishes like char-grilled pork belly with clonakilty black pudding, or slow-cooked ox cheeks with a tomato madras sauce, you'll regret it. There's a separate vegetarian menu, which includes dishes such as a white bean and slow roast tomato cassoulet or a cauliflower masamon curry. Mains from £12.50. One of the most beautiful cities in all of the UK, Edinburgh rises from the wide firth of Forth to a high, rocky pinnacle crowned by the stone walls and towers of Edinburgh Castle. The Scottish capital is a centre of culture and the arts, and is especially well known for its festivals. These include the Edinburgh International Book Festival, which welcomes more than 1,000 authors, to the sparkling Christmas markets and the Edinburgh Fringe, the world's largest festival of the arts. Between these and internationally known events such as the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo, there are always plenty of things to do here. Scotland's most famous landmark, Edinburgh Castle is one of Britain's most visited tourist attractions. Highlights of a visit include hearing the famous one o'clock salute from Half Moon Battery, Cannon Fire commemorates the tradition of helping ships synchronize their clocks, the impressive Scottish National War Memorial and National War Museum, and the stunning collection of crown jewels housed in the Royal Palace. The Royal Mile refers to the streets linking Edinburgh Castle and the Palace of Holyrood House. Lined with charming townhouses, churches, and historic landmarks, this splendid thoroughfare is a great place to stroll for its shops, including kiltmakers, inns, museums, cafes, and restaurants. Many of the buildings are tall, averaging 6 to 15 stories and are referred to locally as lands. Narrow little alleys, called winds, with their quaint hidden backyard, closes, weave in and around them. 
Now, while you are venturing around Edinburgh there's some food places you just have to try while you're in the area. The first is Cannonball Best for special occasions set in a converted school. This three-floor venue has a prime location next to Edinburgh Castle, but there's more to Cannonball than the fabulous views. Owned by Italian Scots and culinary heavyweights the Contini family, the top floor restaurant is Scottish through and through, from the tartan banquettes in the airy dining room to the menu focused around local produce with a modern twist. Mains from £16.50. Or why not try something more casual like the fish market which is best for casual dining. This upmarket fish and chip shop has a prime spot overlooking New Haven Harbor and is well worth the 15-minute drive from the city center. A joint venture from Andine chef patron Roy Brett and Gary Welch, owner of Welch Fishmongers, The Fishmark. And now we venture off to Cardiff, Wales. Cardiff is one of the cultural hotspots of the UK. The capital city of Wales seamlessly blends a long and colourful history with innovation and modernity. Walking the streets, you'll see a mix of old Victorian shopping arcades and super modern stadiums. The one constant is the great atmosphere you'll find throughout. A fairly compact place, many of the best things to do in Cardiff are found immediately around the city centre. There are plenty of interesting little quirks and curios to discover, so it pays to just explore. However, it helps to have somewhere to start, which is why we've prepared this list of the must-see places. Shop for antiques in the Royal Arcade Among the many beautiful Victorian-era shopping arcades around Cardiff, the Royal Arcade is the oldest and perhaps the most luxurious. It's a great place to find real local souvenirs, including Welsh gifts and homeware. Check out Cardiff Antique Center if you're looking for something really special, and maybe have a bite at Wally's Delicatessen, which has been open for decades and is practically an antique itself. Cycle along the Taff through Butte Park. Butte Park is like a little countryside oasis in the middle of Cardiff, just next to the castle. It borders the River Taff, and is undoubtedly the most beautiful part of the Taff Trail, a cycling route which starts by Cardiff Bay. The 130-acre garden contains several self-led nature and walking trails and contains an amazing array of tree and plant species. At the heart of the park is an education center, where you can pick up trail guides and learn more about the park's resident wildlife. Now let's talk about food. Cardiff has some special locations where you can get some decent grub. How about Heaney's? Best for casual dining, special occasions. Head to Heaney's in Pontcana for a casual yet refined dining experience in a contemporary urban space. Opened by Great British Menu finalist Tommy Heaney in October 2018, the daily rotating menu features a selection of sharing plates using innovative, expertly combined ingredients. Standouts on our visit include a starter of Marmite butter, sourdough and duck ham slices, plus mains of cured sea bass with horseradish sorbet, crispy quail, nuggets, and birch smoked Welsh lamb. Desserts are equally inventive, in one dish, a blanket of Earl Grey custard gives way to soft apple crumble with a hidden blackberry sorbet center. 10 course tasting menu, 40 pounds. Or for something a bit more casual try out Dusty Knuckle. Best for, casual dining, kid friendly. Occupying a charming covered outdoor courtyard at the print house, Dusty Knuckle offers finest Neapolitan style pizzas in a casual street food setting with artfully graffitied walls. The open kitchen features a wood-fired oven, from which the alluring aroma of freshly baked pizzas wafts over to the seating area. Quench your thirst with craft beers, cider or wine before tucking into the main affair, a selection of seasonally inspired pizzas with soft, doughy centers and billowing, crispy crusts. Founders, Phil and Deb Lewis are champions of the slow food movement, placing emphasis on the provenance, quality and sustainability of ingredients. From its modest beginnings as a market pop-up, this eatery has rapidly gathered a host of accolades including People's Favorite Restaurant at the Sustainable Restaurant Association's Food Made Good Awards 2018. Look out for a new city center indoor branch opening in spring 2019. Pizza from £8.50. and pence. Lastly in our journey through the UK is London. London is famous for more than its magnificent ancient buildings, the Palace of Westminster, Trafalgar Square, Tower of London, London Eye, Art Galleries, and Big Ben. As the capital city of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, London is well known for influencing other cities of the world since the Middle Ages. London probably has one of the most things to do in the whole of the UK. You can visit many historical and meaningful places in London starting with the Houses of Parliament to visiting the Royal Guard in Buckingham Palace. 
The top attractions you need to do when you visit London are firstly the London Eye. Enjoy amazing 360-degree views over London from the London Eye, a rotating observation wheel which is 135 meters 443 feet high. Spot some of the capital's most iconic landmarks, including Big Ben, the Houses of Parliament and Buckingham Palace. Within each capsule, interactive guides allow you to explore the capital's iconic landmarks in several languages. From £24.50 per ticket and lasting about 30 minutes it's definitely a must-do when you visit. The second must-do attraction is to visit the Buckingham Palace Garden. You don't need a garden party invite to visit the gardens at Buckingham Palace this year. The beautiful green space is open to the public to explore freely for the first time. Pack a picnic or buy refreshments on site, book Buckingham Palace Garden tickets to visit the beautiful gardens, which are open to the public to explore freely for the first time. You can also book a guided tour of Buckingham Palace to visit the lavishly furnished state rooms of one of the world's few remaining working royal palaces and see some of the royal collection's greatest treasures. Now on to some food places to eat in London. Where to start? There are so many unique and wonderful places to try, so it's so difficult to only choose two. We have tried to think of a budget in mind and have somehow shortlisted two for you. The first being Cora Pearl in Covent Garden. Cora Pearl, a small, buzzing Covent Garden restaurant, has a menu that is reassuringly comforting. Everything sounds familiar, confit potatoes, aka domino potatoes, are listed simply as chips, modestly downplaying the kitchen skills. The menu also consists of dishes such as leek terrine, fish stew, pork and onions and a seasonal trifle that are perfect for two giving you some traditional you the second is london grind next to london bridge this sleek industrial restaurant is ideally located to serve both the city and visitors to nearby borough market with a concise menu made up of dishes that suit all day eating arrive before 12 if you want breakfast small plates include chorizo and smoked cheese croquettes while mains straddle the brunch lunch gap with dishes such as sweet potato harissa cakes and there's flat iron chicken with baby potatoes a mean burger or steak with bayonnaise if you prefer the coffee at london grind is excellent as it should be from a business built on flat whites if it's drink a clock one of the three house cocktails built around coffee are a must order especially the old-fashioned thanks for watching city desires Please like, subscribe and comment below. New videos uploaded weekly.